I'm going to say something to you right now that is going to go against everything your mum told you when you were five and about to watch your first scary movie. Movies are not pretend. Movies are real. I remember when I first started to get a sense of just how real movies are and the impact that they can have on our lives. I was 18, I had just moved to the States, and I was feeling pretty miserable and alone, actually. Um, but I went to, the, to watch a French movie called The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. And I remember there was this scene, and I was watching, and all of a sudden it was like, hey, this is me. Which is crazy, because The Diving Bell and the Butterfly is about a man who suddenly has a, a stroke, is left with locked-in syndrome, and uh, can't move any part of his body except blink his left eye. So this scene was about this man and his father, and they're trying to communicate over the phone. And as you can imagine, it was, it's really hard because he could only blink his left eye. Finally, the dad just says, we are both in the same boat. I'm locked in this apartment, unable to use the stairs. You try four flights of stairs when you're 92. You see, we're both locked in. You and your body, me and my apartment. Having just moved from Australia, I remember feeling locked in myself at that time. I was finding it hard to connect with my family. I felt like no one here really got me. And uh, I swear we were all speaking the same language, but it is not Mickey D's, it's Macca's. <laughs> but here I was, and this movie, that was suddenly validating my experience. It wasn't just about me, it was about this man and his father on screen. It was everybody in the audience sitting next to me, and it felt even more universal than that. It felt like I had tapped into some universal notion of everyone that had felt locked in ever. So this power that film has to connect and transform us is what ultimately led me to want to be a filmmaker myself. On my first trip to Ghana a couple years ago, I went to film a woman, Bernice. And when I met Bernice, she uh, had lost her husband 12 years prior. She um, had... Four, adopted six kids at that point, um, most of which were from her siblings who couldn't afford to take care of them, and she was working four jobs to sustain them all. My job was to capture this amazing woman's story. Easy, right? Just point and shoot? Not so easy, as it turns out. Um, if you can imagine this white Aussie in the middle of a Ghanaian village, and I've got this big black camera in front of me, and I'm trying to just be a fly on the wall, but instead I was more like the elephant in the room, or the village. And maybe you've experienced that a little bit too, when you get out your camera phone and you want to get that in-the-moment shot, but as soon as everyone is aware of the camera, they're posing, or they're pouting, um, or they're, they stop talking mid-sentence because they don't want a photo that looks weird of their mouth. It can just be really hard to capture real life as is. So. I realized that if I wanted to get any sort of authentic footage, I was going to have to change my approach. And I sensed from Bernice that having this big black camera in front of me was really intimidating. So I decided to move the camera down a little bit, which probably uh, made my shots, the quality of my shots suffer a little bit. But it allowed for us to have a connection and for her to feel comfortable, and that was important. Sometimes I would just put the camera to the side and I would just let the banalities of real life play in front of the camera uninterrupted. Other times, I felt like I was doing this silent dance around her where I was <clears throat> moving my body with how she moved and I was sensing and predicting where she would go and it was quite special to me. So what started off as this experience that was all about me in Ghana and using this grant money that I had received quickly was not about me at all but about this amazing woman who, though so unlike me, was I was having this amazing connection with. The only way I can describe it that I feel accurately ca captures sort of how I felt is that it's like we had a spiritual connection, almost a tangible connection between us even, where it was unspoken and we had this unspoken dialogue between us, but an unspoken trust. And that was important not only for the film, but for us as human beings. So people often ask me if the more I know about films, if it makes me critical and overanalyze them and just not really enjoy them as much, which is funny because I think actually the opposite is true. The more I know about film and filmmaking and how hard it is to get it right, the more I appreciate them and especially the people behind them. 
In an age where we, should, where we can casually click a thumbs up or a thumbs down, or leave some quick cutting comment on something that we've seen, I've come to find that film and the media we see only becomes truly real in the sense that it reflects our real life experiences and connects us to each other only when we do a little work on our end. We get to choose how film or any art impacts our life. So have a conversation about it. Talk about how it made you feel or how it didn't. It's easy to come to the conclusion that if a film or a TV show or something we've read, if it doesn't do anything for us, then the filmmaker isn't doing their job. And maybe that is true. But maybe it's equally as true that we as the audience aren't doing ours. So my question to you is this. Are you going to subscribe to this tiny, isolating, thumbs up, thumbs down world? Or are you actually going to fight for connection? Film has the power to connect us to the living, real, tangible world. It gives us the power to connect to Bernice in Ghana, in Ghana, and it gives us the power to connect to the person sitting right next to us. It gives us the power to feel, and feelings give us the power to change, and there is absolutely nothing pretend about that. Movies are not pretend, movies are real. Thank you.